Hello. <coughs> yes, welcome to uh, yet another chapter, which is chapter 1.2. Uh, biology, IB Biology, SL and HF Diploma by Teacher Patrick Chimuli. Uh, today, we are going to look at Unit 1.2, uh, which is uh, a course about prokaryotes versus eukaryotes. So our major bigger concept or the question we have is what are the key differences between prokaryotes and eukaryotes? So for this video, we shall see prokaryotes and then we shall see eukaryotes in the next video. So it's very much important to believe or to understand that uh, every organism, uh, every living organism, fall, they fall either into one or, or one of the two groups. It can either be uh, prokaryotes or eukaryotes. So the cellular structures determine which group an organism belongs to. And in this reading, will explain in detail what prokaryotes are, how they are adapted to their functions, as well as eukaryotes and how they are adapted to their functions. So it's important for an IB student to understand, first of all, you need to work on your critical thinking and observation skills, because some of these questions come, uh, we, we, we get these questions using uh, micrographs, other times uh, we use uh, we use micrographs. Other times we use different. Uh, they can draw for you a picture, or you need to explain. You need to look, observe, and explain. So it will be important. It is important that everyone gets to know. Uh, by knowing the structure, you are knowing the structure. Are you knowing the functions? You knowing how each is adapted to its function. There are very many key words we need to use. Well, we believe that during evolution, or when a planet was being created, uh, some organisms were some organisms began when uh, began in a very fascinating way. Some people have different beliefs and the theories about origin of life. Uh, where people think that maybe uh, life came from gases, which gases united and they formed the first organic substance. Others say maybe life came from one of the, the planets and was blown by wind onto planet Earth. Then others have other beliefs that uh, maybe life, uh, we had a living uh, component and then that living component joined together to form the first organic substance. So, now, we all believe, we have different beliefs. Actually, others say that maybe there is a supernatural creator up there, people call God, that is responsible for creating life. So different theories explain differently, but then all that is important, we can read and understand and then follow the concepts to get out the right answers as scientists. So with science, we will say it's the act of understanding the universe and being able to give uh, solutions to ever arising questions and then backing up those solutions with experimentations. So for you to be a scientist, you must understand the whole universe with ever upcoming questions then you'll be able to explain the questions as well as giving solutions, which solutions are backed up by experimentation. So anything which we cannot experiment and give a reliable results from time to time, it's not science, it remains a theory. So today I want us to look at the first uh, source or origin or what we look at as the first form of life. So when you look at the prokaryotes, eukaryotes, what makes them different? So we say prokaryotes are unicellular organisms that lack membrane-bound structures. That's the definition. Uh, unicellular organisms that lack membrane-bound structures 
and the most worthy or not worthy part of it is the nucleus. So prokaryotic cells tend to be small, simple cells measuring around 0.1 to 0.5 micrometers in diameter. So they are minute cells which are believed to be the first form of life, whereby they have what we call the subcells. Their subcells are lacking what we call membrane bound organelles. So our marking point in this part is the membrane bound organelle. So unicellular organisms that lack a membrane bound organelles are what we call a prokaryotes. Primitive, from the word primitive. Primitive cells, prokaryotic cells. So prokaryotic cells are also associated with the bacteria. Basically, when you read about prokaryotes, you are basically talking about bacteria and how it is adapted. So sometimes we ask you to draw the structure of a, of a prokaryote. We are basically asking you to draw any form of a structure of a bacteria you know, but you are in position to write the subcells, the organelles in that bacteria. So, our next concern here, we've seen what a prokaryotic cell is, or prokaryotic cell is a unicellular organism that lack membrane-bound organelles. At the times we say it lacks double membrane organelles, as we are yet to see. So, our next part that we need to see uh, is going to be what is the ultra structure of a cell? So when I mention the term and I say we are talking about uh, a micrograph. Micrograph are drawings that are done which are lacking colors and students have a task of reading this graph in relation to a colored graph that was drawn to them in the textbook or any other way. So IB has a, a way of bringing up these concepts by giving you a micrograph as you can see this. So it's important for you to know. So most of these uh, detailed structures, which you call ultra structure, ultra means detailed, detailed, and such structures are drawn by what we call an electron micrograph. Or to observe them, we use what we call the electron microscopes, which goes deep inside and checks out every detail. So this is a complex structure of a cell in the pancreas, in the pancreas. So let's continue and see. So we have another structure here, which is for bacteria. And you can see how bacteria looks. This is one bacteria that has uh, outer parts, outer membrane is made up of these different projections, a projection like a structures and this one long projection. And then when you check deep inside it, it has an area which is very open, no compartmentalization, that contains uh, a region where we have some few organelles that we are yet to see. So prokaryotic cells are just like that, the upper structure and the lower structure. This represents an eukaryotic cell. Then how about eukaryotic cells? The opposite in definition with eukaryotic cells, they are cells with membrane-bound organelles. Membrane-bound organelles. Membrane-bound organelles, uh, we mean organelles that are having outer layer that is backing their boundaries and again for them they have double membrane organelles for example if you look at this cell and if you see it has a lot of details we have this compartment here we have this compartment here we have different structures here different structures here independent structures here but are all found in one cell. So that means this cell is, is compartmentalized. It has different compartments 
where we have different organelles located in different regions, which is not similar to this. So, what do we see as the prokaryotes? Understanding one, we should all understand that prokaryotes have a simple cell structure without compartmentalization. Prokaryotes are unicellular. That means they have a simple structure. They are one cell thick. And the cell thickness is not anywhere put into different compartments or regions. It's not complex. It's not compartmentalized. Uh, if you look at the internal structure, we are looking at the organelles of this we say they lack membrane bound organelles. So if you look at this, I have one in a micrograph and I have one which is uh, in a drone in 3D. So if you look at the 3D structure and then the, uh, the, the micrographic structure, you will see we have structures we can ask you to label them when we can't see and we can label them when you can see. For example, we all see that the outer part of this, it's one cell, it's one. So because it's one, it becomes unicellular. Yeah, it's one cell. And then, if you look at this part here, um, it has what we call the capsule. A capsule is the outer layer that surrounds the internal environment of this cell. So this capsule is what we see out here, and sorry, it's the same as we see out here where we have those outgrowths. So that is number one. It's called a capsule. When you cross from the capsule, when you got the internal region, we shall find a cytosol, which we call a cytoplasm. A cytosol, cytoplasm, has structures and this is where we find the rest of the internal organelles are located for example you see that in this structure we have what we call the genetic material which is the nuclear area we call it the nucleoid so in this place it is all the whole of this stuff that is moving throughout and if you to see here it is the whole of this region from this coming to this. The whole of this uh, free region is the, the nuclear area. We call it the nucleoid. And this nucleoid contains the DNA. That is the deoxyribose nucleic acid, which is containing the genetic information that is supposed to be passed on. Uh, besides the nucleoid, we have another part where we have a plasmid. A plasmid is also a genetic information that is dissociated from the nucleoid. So there are two genetic informations in this cell, one in the plasmid, so the plasmid is on its own, and then the nucleoid is on the other part. So plasmids here, as you are to see in more chapters, we will see that it is responsible for forming uh, it's responsible, it's what we use when we're studying about bacteria to do a lot of research using plasmids, uh, producing what we call different, uh, different, but in biotechnology we use the plasmids basically. So if you look at this, the capsule is the outer layer, then we got the cytoplasm, then between the cytoplasm, and the capsule bacteria have a cell wall they have a cell wall that is responsible for giving them structure for giving it structure and this is structure it is uh, this cell wall is different from that of a plant cell so the cell wall here is made up of peptidoglycan it's a substance, an organic substance, which is different from the other one of a plant. So we can ask you, 
which one of the following cells have um, a, have a cell? It's only bacteria, which is the eukaryote, that has a cell. The bacteria has a cell. Has a cell. So the bacteria has a cell wall, but it's not made. It's made up of peptoglycan, which is an organic substance. So then, as you move closely inside, uh, we shall see this uh, this part labeled four. These are called ribosomes. As a cell, it is responsible for making its own proteins. So the moment you see ribosomes, wherever they are located, the ribosomes are associated with the protein synthesis because they are responsible for organizing the different, different, uh, uh, different amino acids uh, into a one chain of a protein. So ribosomes, the function of a ribosome is to, is for protein synthesis. So everywhere you see a ribosome, just know they are responsible for protein synthesis. So those are ribosomes. We have some other inclusions. And then we've seen the inside, we have the nucleoid, we have the plasmid, we have the ribosomes, and then we can also have some vacuoles like that inclusion. And then outside the cell, we have the capsule. The capsule on its part, for this area, we don't see those outgrowths, but here we see some outgrowths here. Those outgrowths, uh, they are basically found in bacteria, which we call the ciliated bacteria. They look like cilia, more hair in the nose. So the cilia are also referred to as pili or pili. Pili is responsible for, they are diff for different parts, identification. They are also responsible for, some can be used for movement, but mostly they are for sexual uh, recognition and different things. So as we are yet to see as we move on. So these outgrowths here are called pili. Pili, 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 P-I-L-I, pili. Then besides the pili, uh, you look at this, this outer growth, which is a little longer than the pili, a labeled six. This outer growth is called flagella. The flagella are used in the propulsion, that is movement, of the bacteria or this, prokary uh, this prokaryotic cell as it is swimming or moving wherever it is moving. So this flagella uh, is different from the flagella we may find in the eukaryotic cells. The flagella in this is made up of what we call microtubules. The microtubules in this flagella is made up of nine pairs of microtubules on the outer part to make the ring and zero so zero microtubules in the middle so it becomes a nine plus zero microtubule arrangement so the difference between this uh, the difference between the organization or makeup of this flagella and that that we may find on the eukaryotic cell, the flagella here is made up of nine plus two microtubule, I mean nine plus zero microtubule arrangements, whereas the one that are found in the eukaryotes are made up of nine plus two microtubule arrangement. 9 plus 2 microtubule arrangements in eukaryotes, 9 plus 0 microtubule arrangements in the flagella found on the prokaryotes. So you can see the difference. That's why this looks a little primitive and the other one is improved. So we believe that maybe the eukaryotic cells originated from the prokaryotic cells.
However, prokaryotic cells still exist, whereas even eukaryotic cells exist. Therefore, if we look at this, there are five features an IP student is supposed to master from this cell. The prokaryotic cell one, it is made up of it, it, it's a unicellular cell that lacks compartmentalization. That's number one. Number two, it contains uh, it's the cell that has a cell wall. Number three, it lacks double membrane organelles. Double membrane organelles. Now, a uh, three, it has a nine plus zero flagella, and then four, I mean five, uh, it has the plasmid and the nucleoid. So that makes it different. So the word pro means before. Karyotes means nucleus, before nucleus, before nucleus. So we believe that these cells, because it doesn't have a true nucleus, all its nuclear components are deposited in the cytoplasm. So we derive the name prokaryotes to mean cells that evolved before the formation of a true nucleus. So another question we can also ask you, which one of the following is a cell that lacks a true nucleus? Prokaryotes lack a true nucleus. Very important points for us to understand before we go for any other thing. Our prokaryotes now, I want us to look at structures and their functions. Structure of the prokaryotes and their functions. If you look at the structure of the prokaryotes, uh, we shall see it has the cytoplasm, as I had mentioned, and it lacks a true nucleus. It has a flagella, which moves from, uh, which moves which moves, it's longer, and it is used for movement. It has a cell wall. It has a cell wall, which is for structure and strength, stability structure. And I say it, it has ribosomes. Now, the ribosomes, I told you the functions of the ribosome is for protein synthesis. Formation of proteins inside this cell. And proteins, remember, they are made by joining amino acids in different confirmatory structures to form a different protein, depending on what the DNA has decided. So, ribosomes in prokaryotes are 70 S. S are units. 70 S. That means they are different from those of eukaryotes, which are 80s, meaning the other ones are bigger as compared to the 70s, which are smaller. So let's look at the structures. I'm sure you can label where we are now, what we call a prokaryote and eukaryote. So this is how it appears in real life. So whatever you see out there, this is what we call a ciliated uh, bacterium or bacteria which are having those outer parts and then you see the tiles here this there are no tiles but they are called flagella nine plus zero microtubule arrangements to enable it to move and beat up in water and swim so now if you look at the cell wall the pili the plasma membrane flagella ribosomes nucleoid which contains dna that's all we have here then the next part is going to be uh, the structure related to function. We can draw for you and we ask you to label a certain structure and give us their functions. For example, in this case, what is the importance of flagella, having seen what a flagella is? I mean, a cell wall. A cell wall has 
uh, three parts of functions as everyone needs to know. Number one, a cell wall protects and maintains the shape of this eukaryotic cell, for example, bacteria. Cell wall protects and maintains the shape. Number two, composed of pepto, peptidoglycan, which is a carbon protein, a conjugated protein with a carbon. A carbohydrate protein uh, structure, which is joined together to add on the addition. So, composed of a peptidoglycan, pepti, peptide, that's a protein part, glycogen, that's a carbohydrate part. So, it becomes a carbo, carbohydrate protein joined together to form that strong structure, composed, which is called the peptidoglycan. Also, we have some have additional layers to add hair to structures. So those additional layers, uh, that is the wall function, protects and then maintains shape. And that cell wall is not made up of cuticle, it's not made up of anything. The cell wall here is made up of peptidoglycan. We can ask you what is the component of a peptidoglycan. It's made up of a carbohydrate and a protein joined together to form the structure, the strength. Then plasma membrane, what's the importance? Okay, so some have additional layers uh, to add here, structures. So some of them have teeth and others skin. Um, when you come to, to plasma membrane, uh, controls movement of materials in and out of the cell. That is the cell, that's the capsule. The capsule of this cell is the plasma membrane. So it's, it's similar, but it's not actual. It's not as it is in the eukaryotes. You see that eukaryotes are extreme. They are they are supreme on the prokaryotes because these ones are primitive. You can still see and bear witness that it doesn't have a true nucleus. Then the plasma membrane controls movement of materials in and out of the cells. Then it's also important in binary fission, that is during reproduction, because these bacteria reproduce asexually. So binary fission is when a cell divides into two eco cells. Then we have the cytoplasm, is complete inside, so it's complete interior. It forms the, the, the site for other interior organelles. Importance of a plasma membrane in a, eukaryotic, in a prokaryotic cell controls movement, number two. Uh, it forms, the, it's important in binary fusion, that's reproduction, and also forms the cytoplasm inside, which makes the interior environment, the internal environment, and it doesn't have any compartmentalization, and even the DNA, if you look at this bacteria, is a visible structure. So this is the nucleoid, this is the plasmid, uh, these ones are ribosomes, they are, it's called ribosome, it's 70S, that is the structure, then we have depots of substances, microphages and glycogen granules, because this is not a plant, so it has some deposited structures or storage, storage structures, then flagella for locomotion, and also attachment to others. Oh. Uh, if we go to the prokaryotes, we still have this. Uh, if you look at the pili, pili uh, these are the outer compartments that I'm trying to bring out for everyone to see. Uh, these are hollow, hair like structures made of protein. Uh, allow bacteria to attach to other cells. So for the pili, they are hollow like structures. They are also made up of proteins and they attach to cells to outer parts of the bacteria. And they, are spe they have specialized roles. One, we have those which are responsible for reproduction, especially for sexually reproducing bacteria. That is uh, conjugation, uh, conjugation, we also have, uh, so they are for, diff for, for sexual identification, conjugation, and all that stuff. Then number two, 
the flagella i told you this is uh the purpose of a flagella it is a single name it's a flagellum it is for mortality that is locomotion uh flagella are long appendages appendages are attachments which rotate by means of a motor located just under the cytoplasmic membrane so they can do and bacteria may have one or few or many flagella in different positions on their cells so the flagella they are for locomotion basically they can rotate in all directions for movement and to allow movement of materials i mean to allow, to allow movement of this cell uh, from one place to another the prokaryotic structure and function we talk about the ribosomes now uh, ribosomes are sites of protein synthesis that is what i've been mentioning they are small made up of two parts that come together and can be in large numbers so the ribosomes in the eukaryotic cells are uh, they are 70s 70s means uh it is uh, just the means uh, uh it's, it's the name comes from the word sedimentation coefficient from fed bag so the s stands for fed bag units a measure of the rate of sedimentation in centrifugation so when they centrifuge this cell and produce the, uh, the different compartments of this micro this ribosome it gives us two structures and the units which we use to label as you can see uh, they are referred to as vet bag units so s stands for vet bag units so rather than the size of count for why how many fragments do not add up so it's set back units uh some made up of 50 and others sat i mean 30 but this is what we see basically uh we can see prokaryotic cells if you look inside them they have a nucleoid so nucleoid uh, that's the dna in the bacteria cell is generally confined to this central region so it's here that's the nucleoid that's where we have the dna of the bacteria cell attached but next to the nucleoid we have the plasmids so though it is isn't bound by a membrane it is visibly distinct from the rest of the cell interior much as this nucleoid is not found in any membrane as we can see uh, in eukaryotes where it is in the nucleus still we can see it is visible and it is distinct from the other membranes so in prokaryotes the nucleoid can be easily seen remember it doesn't the name comes as a result of lack of i mean before nucleus so these cells evolved before nucleus and that's why it looks like this so sometimes we draw this for you and we want you to find out which structure in a micrograph i want you to pay much attention on the micrograph so when you look at the micrograph uh, you will see where we see the white part that's where we have very many uh most of the ribosomes so this part here inside the compact this part is the cytoplasm then we look at the the chromosome it doesn't have this one here has the so most of these ones here are what we look at as the nucleoids and then the outer part is the cell wall so this is the cell wall in the middle and outer part we see uh the uh, different pili and other stuffs so we continue to look at the plasmid a plasmid is a dna molecule that is separate from and can replicate independently of the chromosomal dna so if you look at the chromosomal dna is what we see in the uh in the it's what we see in the nucleoid so like i said bacteria has two the chromosomal dna and the outer one which we call the plasmids so plasmids 
are separate from and can replicate independently of the chromosomal DNA. They are double-stranded and in many cases circular. You can see they are always in a circular form in many cases. So plasmids usually occur naturally in bacteria but are sometimes found in eukaryotic organisms as well. So this makes a distinction between eukaryotes and prokaryotes. This one has the nucleoid where we find the DNA and then the plasmids where we find uh, the outer DNA. So this is okay. Now I can draw them for you. Time for recalling. It's trivial time. So these two are drawings. A drawing of the a drawing of the atra structure of the eukaryotic cell. Which structures can you identify in this electronic micrograph? I want us to pay attention to this more. What I see here is what is here. What you see out here is what is this. What you see here is what is this. What you see here is this. So how can you identify that this is a, a nucleoid, this is a... This is a, uh, uh, this is a, uh, uh, you can see a nucleoid, you can see uh, the plasmid, you can see the peptide glycan, uh, which is the cell, cell, cell wall, you can see the flagella. So let's see if you got it right. You can pause the video and try to label, then you can tell me. Yes. So if you see, uh, we will see the capsule outside, we come to the cytoplasm, then we are interested in this cell wall, I'm uh, also interested in this nucleoid, and then the plasmids are always just next to the nucleoid. So if you look at this picture, if this is where I have the nucleoid, just at the, side, just at the nucleoid I can see plasmids, and that's why the labelings here can move the same. Uh, so, I have one activity which everyone needs to try out in their free time. A complete in your sketchbook, you must be able to draw and label a diagram of the atra structure of a prokaryotic cell based on the electronic micrograph. So you need to take time, pause the video, and then you draw that structure to re that just to, 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 to see if you can still draw it. It gives marks. Then also show the organelle previously discussed must be included in your drawing. That is activity one. So this is what we do. So only draw and label the features you can clearly see. Don't put structures in because you think they should be there. That's the biggest warning you need to know. So this is what I expected you to draw, uh, like this, you put the nucleoid, you put the ribosomes, uh, ribosomes are supposed to be this, you put the plasmids, and also put the cell, so or include the fragella in a case you can, so this is what ex was expected out of you. Then question two, prokaryotes divide by binary fission, that is understanding two, that all prokaryotes, they reproduce and multiply their number by binary fission, binary fission, binary fission. That is one cell dividing into two cells. So a sexual reproduction, semi-conservative, and it has DNA loops. Uh, it has DNA loop, reproduces by asexual reproduction, and then if it's dividing, it's this division is semi-conservative replication of DNA, and then the DNA loops attach to membrane, membrane elongates and pitches off. This is how it does. It reproduces by sexual reproduction, and then the semi-conservative form of replication, whereby we have one new structure attached to one old structure so that each two cells which are formed has a new structure and 
all this structure. That's what we call semi-conservative replication. Then what happens during that stage? A DNA loop attaches to the membrane, as you can see, and the membrane elongates. So this elongation at uh, one cell with the attached membrane continues and then divides into two. Two data cells, clones, genetically identical, are formed. Two data cells which are genetically identical are formed. So what are the similarities between prokaryotes and the eukaryotes? We can look at the similarities by looking at the DNA, the plasma membrane, the cytoplasm, and ribosomes. All of these three, I mean, these cells contain the three. I mean, the four contains DNA, deoxyribose, nucleic acid, that directs the process of protein synthesis. They contain plasma membranes, which people call cell membranes. They contain cytoplasms, that is the internal environment where we have the inner, uh, the subcell inside the cell where we find the organelles, and they both contain ribosomes. Both contain ribosomes. So what makes them different? We shall see this again in the next upcoming video where we are going to be talking about eukaryotes. So prokaryotes, uh, they have their DNA. Uh, their DNA ring has no protein. Whereas in eukaryotes, their DNA ring has chromosomes, and that means it has proteins. Then prokaryotes, the DNA is free. Here the DNA is in the nucleus, in the eukaryotes. In prokaryotes, no mitochondrion. In the eukaryotes, they have a mitochondrion, which is, uh, which is a double membrane organelle. So it doesn't have, this one lacks double membrane organelles, this one has double membrane organelles. Then uh, eukaryotes have uh, prokaryotes have no internal compartmentalization organelles. This one has all organelles has compartmentalizations. The prokaryotes are less than ten micrometers in length. This is greater than ten micrometers due to compartmentalization. So, having seen all that. Uh, I wish you subscribe to this channel and take more lessons from Teacher Patrick Shimuli of Success Impact Learning Africa. Thank you so much. Take time and read. Call friends to come and do more of, this les of these lessons with me. I'll meet again in the next video.